Welcome back. This is our Algebra 2 Transmission Functions Lesson Number 3, Vertical Stretching Homework Review Part 2. <clears throat> Please make sure you catch Part 1 to see some of the rules we had when coming up with vertical stretching or compressions. Question number 6. The graph of y equals h of x is shown below. The function f of x defined by negative 1 half of h of x plus 3. What three transformations have occurred to the graph of H to produce the graph of F? Specify transformations and the order they occurred in. So it's very similar to the question we had right before, question number five. And again, we take a look, when we approach this null, we use ordered operations. We see here, here is here in this case, we have H of X. F of X is first going to multiply H of X by neg one half. And neg one half is really neg one times one half. Okay, and so here, the very first thing would be because of negative one would be the first transmission reflects in the x-axis. That's the very first thing, okay? And now for the one-half. The one-half multiplying in this case is going to be a vertical compression. Actually, what a red... So, well, it's okay. There you go. Vertical compression. We're multiplied by one half in this case. So really, what it would really be is vertical compression by a factor of two, or multiply, in this case, multiply y, by one half, which we'll see later on in our transformations, okay? And finally, for the third part, plus three, this will be our third transformation will be, in this case, a vertical shift up by three, okay? And now what we're gonna do here is we're going to after naming all these transformations, is to transform each of the coordinates we have here. And we have here neg 6, comma neg 8, and we'll start from there. So let's see now. So neg 6, comma neg 8. First transformation reflect in the x-axis means in this case it will be, uh, the reflection reflecting the x-axis is going to be uh, keep x the same and y, y stays the same, y changes, change sign. So, and maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll first to show the each of the steps here and then transform them as we go along. So we'll take x, y, and to reflect in the x-axis, we're going to have x comma negative y, okay? So that's the first transformation. The next transformation would be, in this case, xy becomes x comma one half y. So we're going to take our transformed coordinate and then we're going to multiply the y value by one half. And then finally, for the third, third transformation, xy becomes x comma y plus three. That's the shift up by three. And so our very first coordinate is going to be, in this case, neg 6, comma 8, neg 8. So neg 6, comma neg 8 will now become neg 6, comma positive 8. Now we take our neg 6, comma positive 8, and now we're going to transform this by keeping x the same. So it's neg 6, comma 1 half of 8 is going to be 4. All right? And then finally, we're going to take our neg 6, comma 4, and we're going to add 3 to that, so it becomes neg 6, comma 7. And so neg 6, comma 7, neg 6, comma 7 in this case, well, we have still the same neg 6 here, so 3, neg 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is our new coordinate here. Okay, now let's use neg three comma six. So neg three comma six. Oops. Neg three comma six. Let me just kind of get rid of that here. Redraw us again. 
hopefully it'll be okay now. Neg three comma six. X stays the same, so neg three. Y is negated, so it becomes neg six. So neg three comma neg six now, we're gonna transform under the second transformation, uh, correct pressure by factor two or multiplying the Y value by one half. So neg six comma half, sorry, neg three. This is what happened here, rushing. Take your time, everybody, take your time. Neg three half of neg six is gonna be neg three. And now we take this neg three and comma neg three and add three to the Y value. So it becomes neg three comma zero. And neg three comma zero becomes this coordinate here. Okay. Our third coordinate is two comma zero. So two comma zero, the first we do reflection in the x-axis, well, negative one times zero is just zero, so stays at two comma zero. And we take this quote unquote transform point, which is really the same point from before, and we're gonna multiply the y value by one half, which one half times zero is still zero. And finally, the final transformation for this coordinate becomes uh, x comma y plus three, x stays the same, and adding three to zero, we get three. So we have now two comma three, Ooh, let me make sure it looks like a three. Ugh, sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. That's better, okay, somewhat. <laughs> so, so we now have two comma three. Two comma three is right, two comma three is right here. X is two, Y is three. Now the final coordinate of this here is five comma four. So it's now transform five comma four. Let me move this up a little bit here. Okay. So we have five comma four. So x stays the same, y is negated, so five comma neg four. We now take this point and we keep the x stays the same and the y value is gonna be multiplied by, two, by one half. So we have five comma neg two. And now five comma neg two, we're gonna add three to the y value, it becomes five comma one. And what happens is all these are the final coordinates of after all the transformations. Now, do you have to write them all this way? Uh, I, I do this because I wanna make sure I get everything correct. So five comma one, five comma one is right here. All right, and so what does this look like? Well, let's see if I can draw this properly. I, I'll use uh, line segments, probably better this way. I'll use the, the Dash lines show a little bit of a contrast here. Okay. And this will be our f of x. So what happens is the dotted line is f of x, while the solid line is, is, is h of x in this case. We say h of x. Okay. And let me show all the work here. So hopefully you guys can see everything. Yeah, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work. Not only is this because we want, now do we have to transform every single coordinate on this graph? No, just the important points where you see a lot of the, the end points in this case and where the points change direction. Okay, all right, bye. This is gonna be our algebra two, this end of our algebra two transformation functions, lesson three, vertical stretching home review part two, which I'm pretty sure you, some of you guys are like, oh man, we really had trouble with this. If you did, and, and now see how it's done uh, and you found it was helpful, please give a like. Thanks for sticking around to the very end, to end of this video. And uh, if you have not done so, please subscribe to the channel and turn notification, turn on notifications to be alerted when new videos are added to the channel. Okay, leave any questions or comments in the comment section below and look forward to seeing you in our next video, which is gonna be the part three home review. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Take care and be safe.